Essentialism. This is an ancient Greek idea that things, including animals and humans, have an unchanging essence or nature, like a set of attributes necessary for their identity. The philosopher Anaximander of Miletus once hailed the first Darwinist, proposed that life began in water and humans likely descended from fish. He thought that early humans couldn't have survived in their current form because they needed extensive care as babies, so they must have evolved from different animals. Another philosopher from antiquity, Empedocles, believed that what we see as birth and death are just combinations and separations of different elements. He believed early animals and plants were made of random parts and only the ones that fit together survived. This idea foreshadows concepts like Darwin's natural selection, though it wasn't fully developed as a theory of evolution. Fixism. This is the idea that all species have always existed in their current form and do not change over time. This belief was shared by philosophers like Plato and Aristotle. They thought that all things, including living beings, were fixed by some divine design. But Aristotle didn't believe in divine creation or evolution. Instead, he argued that each species has an ideal, unchanging form and they only reproduce to match that perfect form. This view is part of his theory known as hylomorphism, where he saw every living thing as a combination of matter and immaterial form. He even described nature as a ladder of fixed types with each species having a set place in the hierarchy. Although he noticed similarities between animals, he did not think this meant species evolved. Later, in the Middle Ages, scholastic thinkers expanded on Aristotle's ideas, developing the great chain of being, which also supported the ideas that species were fixed and unchanging. Fixism was influenced by these early ideas and became a key belief before evolution theories emerged. Creationism. This is the belief that the universe, life and humans were created by divine, supernatural acts. It's based on religious interpretations, especially from the Bible's Genesis creation story where God creates everything as it exists today. The most common form is young earth creationism, which claims that the earth is only about 6 to 10 thousand years old based on a literal interpretation of the Bible and that everything was created in six days. This version outright rejects evolution. Old Earth creationism challenges this view by accepting that the Earth is much older, possibly billions of years. It believes the six days in the Bible are metaphorical, representing much longer periods. Old Earth creationists still reject evolution but agree with mainstream science on the Earth's age. Another view is theistic evolution which combines belief in God with acceptance of scientific explanation like evolution. They reject the conflict between religion and science. Here, God is seen as the ultimate cause acting through laws of nature. Other religious perspectives have their own take on creation. Islamic creationism follows the idea that the universe was created by God as described in the Quran. It usually views the book of Genesis as a corrupted version of God's message. The creation myths in the Quran are more vague and allow for a wider range of interpretations. Some Muslims believe in evolution while others think life has always existed as it is. Jewish creationism varies widely, with many Jews accepting evolution as compatible with their beliefs. Hindu creationism posits that all species go through a cycle of rebirth and humans may have existed for trillions of years. Lamarckism. This early theory of evolution was proposed by French zoologist Jean-Baptiste Lamarck in 1809. He suggested that organisms could acquire new traits during their lifetime through interactions with the environment and that these traits could be passed on to their offspring. For example, if an animal used a certain body part a lot, it would become stronger and this improvement would be inherited by its young. Conversely, if a body part wasn't used, it would weaken over time. Lamarck also believed that life naturally progressed toward greater complexity and perfection. According to him, simple organisms were destined to evolve into more complex, better adapted forms over time. He did not think mass extinctions were common because he believed organisms could continuously adapt to changing environments. 
Although many modern biology textbooks contrast Lamarckism with Darwin's theory of natural selection, Darwin himself gave some credit to the idea that traits could be inherited through use and disuse, similar to Lamarck's thinking. However, as science advanced, especially with the discovery of Mendelian genetics, the ideas of Lamarckism were largely abandoned in biology. Catastrophism. This is a theory proposed by French paleontologist Georges Cuvier in 1812. It argues that mass extinctions and the patterns we see in the fossil record were caused by sudden, large-scale natural disasters like volcanic eruptions or floods. According to Cuvier, each geological epoch ended with a catastrophe wiping out species. Afterwards, new life forms quickly appeared to replace them. Unlike other ideas of this time, Cuvier didn't attribute these events to religious causes like Noah's flood or divine creation. He believed they were purely natural. His research led him to suggest that Earth was much older than previously thought, with several extinction events happening over millions of years. A modern example of catastrophism is the theory that an asteroid struck Earth about 60 6 million years ago, causing the extinction of around 70% of all species, including dinosaurs. Neocatastrophism even explains how Earth's large moon may have been formed through a catastrophic event. Vitalism. This theory holds that living organisms possess a unique, non-physical essence that distinguishes them from non-living things. This idea emerged in ancient Egypt and gained traction during the 18th century when many biologists sought to explain life beyond evolutionary theories like Darwinism. Vitalists like English anatomist Francis Glisson believed that a vital spark or force guided living organisms, implying that life went beyond principles of natural selection and could not be fully understood through physics and chemistry alone. However, as scientific understanding advanced, especially through experiments that demonstrated how different parts of living organisms work together in a logical and mechanical way, similar to gears in a machine, vitalism gradually lost its credibility. Today, it's viewed as a superseded idea or pseudoscience in the context of evolutionary biology. Progressionism or orthogenesis is the idea that living things have an inherent tendency to evolve in a straight line toward a specific goal or direction. Proponents of this theory believe that evolution is not random but rather follows a predetermined linear path toward increasing complexity. Therefore, proponents of progressionism rejected the Darwinian theory of natural selection as the main driver of evolution. The theory gained popularity among paleontologists who believed that the fossil record showed a clear direction in the evolution of species. However, they didn't always agree on whether this direction was intentional or goal-oriented. For example, Henry Fairfield Osborne argued that certain traits in extinct animals like the large antlers of the Irish elk may have actually led to their extinction, demonstrating that not all changes are beneficial. The support for orthogenesis declined in the 1940s when the modern synthesis of evolutionary biology highlighted the complexity of evolutionary patterns that could not be explained by this straightforward model. But some research in recent years has shown that there may be limited paths for evolution, especially regarding mutation biased adaptation where certain mutations can lead to predictable outcomes. Darwinism. The theory developed by the English naturalist Charles Darwin says that evolution mainly happens through natural selection. This means that all species change and develop over time because of the survival of individuals that have small inherited traits that help them compete, survive and reproduce better. Due to these benefits, these specific traits are passed on to the next generation of a population. If the environment stays the same. If the environment changes, new traits may be favored, leading to small changes or even new species. Traits are passed down based on survival advantage, mate preference or reproductive health benefits. 
Natural selection contrasts artificial selection where humans intentionally breed animals or plants for certain traits. The famous phrase survival of the fittest comes from Darwin's theory and describes natural selection. Here fitness means how successful an organism is at reproducing. So it's best understood as survival of the type that leaves the most copies of itself in the next generations. Saltationism was the idea that new species could arise from large, sudden mutations rather than gradual, small changes via natural selection. Early geneticists like Hugo de Vries supported this concept, believing that major evolutionary jumps could happen almost instantly, creating new species in one generation. This view evolved into mutationism where mutations were seen as the main driver of evolution. Over time geneticists like Thomas Morgan found that most mutations were small and didn't create new species immediately. Instead these small changes could spread if they were beneficial leading to the modern view of evolution. Today biologists agree that while mutations introduce variation, natural selection decides which traits survive and spread. Some argue that evolution can still be driven by mutations when they produce more efficient traits, especially if natural selection is less prominent. Biological structuralism. This theory assumes that evolution isn't driven only by natural selection, but also by physical forces that shape how an organism's body develops. Some structuralists believe these forces can even take precedence over natural selection. Before Darwin, scientists like Etienne saint hilaire suggested that animals bodies parts are connected in ways where changes in one part would affect others. Others like Darcy Thompson hinted at vitalism theory and also looked at geometric patterns in nature to explain evolution. More recent thinkers proposed that the shapes and forms of living things can emerge naturally from how their parts like cells or tissues interact. Some also suggest that during early evolutionary stages like in the Cambrian explosion, the way animals looked and were built was partly shaped by the forces of nature, not just by inherited traits. Darwinian biologists accept that some basic structures can form naturally, but they doubt that self-organization alone is enough to explain big evolutionary changes. Neo-Darwinism or modern synthesis is an updated version of Darwin's theory of evolution that combines his ideas of natural selection with modern genetics. This theory emerged after science Scientists like August Weismann rejected Lamarck's ideas. Neo-Darwinism stresses that natural selection is the main driving force behind evolution. Genetic mutations are seen as the source of new traits, while natural selection determines which traits will survive. Evolution is understood as a process that happens over time at the population level, not within individuals. Over generations, small changes in genes accumulate, which explains why evolution happens gradually. This means it can take a very long time for a completely new species to develop, just as Darwin originally suggested. Punctuated equilibrium. This is a theory suggesting that after a species first appears in the fossil record, it tends to remain stable for long periods, showing little to no change, a state known as stasis. According to the theory, significant evolutionary shifts can happen fast and often lead to the splitting of one species into two or more distinct new new species rather than one transforming into another. This contrasts with phyletic gradualism which suggests that evolution happens steadily and gradually over time. Developed in 1972 by paleontologists Niles Eldridge and Stephen Jay Gould, they argued that the gradual changes often attributed to Darwinism are not well supported by fossil evidence which instead shows that most species experience long periods of stability punctuated by brief significant changes. Genetic drift theory or the neutral theory of molecular evolution introduced by Moto Kimura in 1968 suggests that most changes and variations in genes between species are not mainly due to natural selection but rather happen because of random processes known as genetic drift. Genetic drift refers to changes in gene frequencies in a population due to chance events. The theory suggests that most mutations that do 
persist are neutral instead of beneficial. A neutral mutation is a change in a gene that doesn't affect an organism's ability to survive or reproduce. While some mutations can harm an organism, natural selection tends to eliminate these quickly, so they don't contribute much to variation. This theory sparked debate because it seemed to challenge traditional Darwinian evolution. The controversy grew after a paper from 1969 titled Non-Darwinian Evolution showed evidence that much of protein evolution is due to neutral mutations and genetic drift. However, Kimura clarified that while neutral theory focuses on molecular evolution, changes in physical traits like size, shape, color or other features that can be seen or measured are still largely influenced by natural selection, meaning the neutral theory isn't a replacement for Darwinian ideas. Gaia theory, proposed by James Lovelock in the 1970s, suggests that all living things and their non-living surroundings on Earth work together like parts of one big organ. Organism. It says that living things help keep the planet's conditions just right for life by influencing things like temperature, salt levels in the oceans and the air we breathe. Therefore, the theory assumes that evolution occurs through a symbiotic relationship between living organisms and their non-living surroundings, where they interact in a way that maintains conditions favorable for life. The Gaia theory can be viewed as a perspective that extends beyond traditional Darwinian mechanisms of natural natural selection and adaptation. However, the theory continues to face skepticism, with many scientists arguing that it lacks strong empirical support and may contradict established evolutionary principles. Subscribe to stay in the loop and check out my channel to see more videos on other topics.